Hey guys, John here from ContraBIM and I'm recording some videos for the MEP modeling course that I'm running and I thought I would share one here on YouTube about creating openings by using different MEP elements that we have already placed. Now we have uh, here just a little bit of a floor plan. We've already gone through our modeling exercise and kind of placed our unit our ductwork, uh, some diffusers here. And so now what I want to do is I want to go through and uh, create the steps of actually generating some openings by using our place diffusers. Now it's really easy to do, um, and you can actually do this with a number of different types of elements through walls, slabs, roofs, and so on. And all you have to do is you just simply right click, we go and connect, and we go with our create openings from selection. So when we do this, we get this little dialog box and we can see how many elements we have selected. We can choose the shape that we want to generate. So obviously in this case, we can either go with a round, which it would make a circle around there, which is obviously not what we want. We can do a square or we can do either or depending on the shape of the element. So um, in this case, we don't need any additional offset because it's just a uh, diffuser. And um, yeah, we also have some options for merging nearby openings. In this case, uh, we wouldn't want to do that here, but um, we don't have any other openings close enough to merge anyway. So, all right. With that, um, the final step here that we can do is we can either choose to create the element ID from the original. So in this case, because it's a duct terminal, it would create an opening called duct terminal, which would be fine. Or we can just use the default tool settings, which I believe, um, if we deselect this here, go to our opening tool, it's just going to be like an opening that. 0, 02 in this case. So, um, okay, with that, let's go ahead and we'll inherit. Let's create the opening. And so there we go. We can now see our uh, opening is there. If we go to our 2D plan here, you can actually see that um, it's actually right behind there. So if we take all of this, let's temporarily hide our selected layers. You can see our symbol floor plan on the floor plan there. So if we wanted to make some modifications, we could go in and adjust this here. We could change this to any number of these different uh, symbols for the openings. We can go with no symbol. Um, if we wanted, we could get rid of this little uh, center line by going in and uh, that's down here at the bottom, our reference axis. So we can turn that off as well. Oh, that did not seem to turn off. Where was it? Reference axis, turn off. Okay, so that cleans that up a little bit, and um, so yeah, that way we can um, just clean this up a little bit on our floor plans if needed, or if we wanted, we could just leave one of these other symbols. Lots of different options with these for different uh, types of display. So we could do a diagonal opening, that would be fine. Um, so yeah, there we go. So let's bring back our MEP elements here. And we can do the same thing here actually in 2D as well. So let's, uh, we have it selected, let's create openings. And now that we had picked up that setting there, we can see that we've now created those, two of those openings. We can also do this multiple times at multiple elements at the same time. So, oop, I don't wanna do that. Let's, uh, well, let's do this. Let's, going to delete these. We'll bring back everything else. And so let's just do a marquee around here. And so if we wanted to, we could go through, we could select these two. We could also select the ceiling diffuser over here. And we can create all of these at once by creating openings. And so there we go. So you can do, if you have all these kind of picked out, ready to go, then you can go through and just set those. This one here would certainly need to be adjusted down a little bit to match our ceiling. Um, we can take this and stretch it down to fit. And okay, so there we are. That is the openings. We can also do this from other types of either ductwork or um, equipment. In this case, we actually have a, uh, a, uh, a fire damper here. So we could use this as well. If we wanted to give ourselves a little bit of an offset, we can just plug in half inch in each direction here and uh, create openings. So that would be fine. Um, if we wanted to create a common opening, say for these two 
uh, pipes running through here. Um, because it's within this one foot radius here, it's going to merge them together. So you'll see as we create the openings there, it's going to merge those together. Um, if we didn't want to do that, we can undo and we can even just, uh, this would be good for like uh, creating a fire penetration. Um, we can turn this off or we can kind of really crank this down um, or we just set this to zero and that way it's not going to create those and we just uh, create the openings and so that way we can uh, get these penetrations that we can actually count um, in this case and we could assign these to um, like a, uh, a fire uh, penetration takeoff. So that would be really useful for that purpose as well. So lots of different options here. Um, and so just wanted to do a quick video on this workflow. Um, we can take a look at this through another uh, example that we have set up here. I'm just going to move over here. We were looking at doing like a uh, exhaust riser for those same kind of uh, combination uh, restrooms. And so in this case, we have multiple elements here that are, all of these are really kind of like, uh, they're all penetrating slightly into this roof, which is really important. Um, so I just want to make a note here that if it's not penetrating or it's not touching the element, it's not going to cut. And so to demonstrate this, let's actually get inside of our roof. I'm going to take both of these here and let's just, uh, for the moment, I'm just going to kind of elevate them up off the deck and so if we take this and we extend it down where it's not crossing through then when we go to cr try to create these openings and say we want like a one inch overhang around this it's not going to create it so it's it won't create it unless it's actually um, barely touching into it so you can see here on the preview as soon as I drag this up and as soon as it starts going from like a solid line to a dash line we know that that now is within the element and so then we can go and create the openings and you'll see that it actually sets this offset from the widest point so in that case it's going to be this flange connection let's undo that and I just want to show what happens when we bring this all the way up and through so when we use this now to create the openings, it will actually do that one inch offset based off of the, the uh, geometry that's crossing through it. So it will automatically recognize uh, where that offset is and then generate that opening based on that point there. So, okay, so I'm going to undo these last few steps here. Um, we can take these elements and kind of snap them back down so that we're all connected. And if we wanted, we once again, we could take our uh, our transition here that's connecting to our, our fan. We can create an opening around it and it's going to use the widest points, which is awesome. Or we can, uh, alternatively, we can use our, um, our fan. And in this case, because our fan is slightly into our roof, it would actually use the boundary on that one. So we can see that that's set to the outside, which probably isn't what we want in this case. Um, but if we take all of this here and we just adjust this slightly higher so that it's above. So now that's sitting above. So we'd probably have some sort of curb underneath this anyway. So maybe we extend it up just another few inches so we can build a curb up underneath there. Um, and we'll simply just go through, connect all these real quick. So now if we chose to use this, well, it's not even penetrating there, so it's not going to create any opening at all. Um, but if we take this, extend that connection point down like three inches so that it's technically in the roof. So we extended that a little bit. We'd actually need to now take our transition and we need to just offset that down. You can see how useful 3D mouse is for these types of scenarios. Where's that point? 
somewhere down in here. Come on. There we go. Um, so now that it's penetrating, we can create those openings. And once again, it's going to be one inch from that flange. So, okay, there we go. That's uh, really what I wanted to cover in uh, this, uh, this exercise. There's probably a few other little examples that we can take a look at, though, that might be interesting as well. Let's just pull a copy of this duct over, and I'm going to just elevate it up and through and so with this let's just do a few quick offsets on this so let's create a circular duct we'll kind of shift this over we'll shift this even closer and let's also over here we'll create like a an oval duct Probably not too likely that that would be in this location and or penetrating through a roof like this, but you never know. Um, and OK, so with these three, I'm going to center them up a little bit more in our roof. So let's talk a little bit more about the options that we have for cutting here. So so with these, when. And right now, we'll just note that all of these for merge nearby openings, they're all set to zero inches. So when we go into we, when we go to create these, let's create the openings. You'll see that this now create it. It immediately identified the available shapes. So we had either a rectangular. It picked up our circular and then our oval. It just identified that as a. Um, as a rectangular shape. If we wanted to override this and set this as a circular, then we would want to actually just set our shape of the opening, create the opening there, and then it would use those same settings. Um, it would create a one inch offset from that point crossing through there. And um, so it would create that opening based off that particular setting that we have there. So um, let's take all these. We're going to highlight our openings let's delete them and so let's let's do this let's crank this up a little bit let's go to like six inches in each direction and so now when we grab all of these we'll go back to this setting here and when we create openings it will automatically merge these because they are within six inches to each other and this one over here uh, obviously was a little bit further away it was actually seven and seven eighths inches so if we kind of respecify this to eight inches now um, in either direction when we create openings it should pick that up and um, let's see so yeah there it did identify that uh, that difference between and it just created one large opening in this case so okay with that I think that's pretty much it for what I wanted to cover here um, we can jump here to like a roof plan and um, we can see here these different symbols that are coming through. Um, so, of course, you can go in these uh, uncut symbols. We can uh, specify this however we'd like. So if we want that to be a cross, we can set it as a cross or an X in that case. And um, you can also see our other opening in, uh, in that underneath our, our fan as well. So lots of different options here to just go through and adjust as you see fit so okay that's it let's uh we'll wrap this one up here um the mep modeling course is obviously still running so if you're interested in joining us we're uh covering a lot of different topics and modeling exercises uh so i'll leave a link in the description but hopefully this gives you a good idea for how you can use these uh opening tools and um yeah it's pretty uh pretty easy to use and um yeah hopefully you picked up a few little tips from this video so all right, I'll end this one here. Leave any questions in the comment section, and uh, we'll be back with another ContraBIM tutorial video very soon. Thanks for watching.